And then I said, well, if you're interested in that, then maybe you should see some of the artwork that Patrick Hughes does, because I knew she was an artist. The cues from the painting are opposite to the cues from the actual structure of the surface that he's painting on. So you get these conflicting sources of information, and that's why it's called reverse perspective. The scientific explanation for the illusory effects of reperspective are still being debated. Whereas people who are curious, um, they don't even necessarily have to have a background in science, but if they're just very curious and are not afraid of delving into something a little deeper, they may very well appreciate the scientific explanation. It has five different layers, how the image gets to us, how, the, uh, how we process the image, and how we are constantly fighting, this is what I see, no, this is what I'm getting. Reverspective pieces are a great intersection between the, vi the visual science of how the brain works and art. A reverspective art piece becomes a teachable moment. But does it work with people who have amblyopia? Does it work with people who have decreased vision? Does it work on people that don't have stereo? And then this is a piece that works on everybody. I've been involved in so much research, both student-based and, and colleague-based in my own over the years, but I've never done anything that that, that approached the intersection between art and, and science as this project.